thank you for joining us today. Earlier today, I spoke with Vice President Pence on a call with governors from all across the country regarding expanding testing capacity and how states are working at a rapid pace to make sure that more and more of their citizenry can be tested, especially those uh, that, are outside the, that, that are outside the realm of traditional COVID-19 symptoms. Uh, expanding testing capacity is a very important step as we uh, begin to safely reopen our economy and it's why we continue to emphasize the importance of that. It's also why over the weekend our Unified Command Group popped up 19 drive-through testing facilities across the state. We conducted more than 11,200 free tests for Tennesseans many of which uh, did not have traditional COVID-19 symptoms. This surge of tests accounts for the largest number of tests conducted in our state over a two-day period. In total, we've conducted over 100,000 tests statewide uh, so far in Tennessee. I wanna thank the local health departments that were so important and continue to be so important. Uh, our EMS uh, agencies across the state, our first responders, law enforcement that uh, we're a part of working with the National Guard, and I especially want to thank the National Guard for their efforts in expanding testing to Tennesseans uh, who, are, who have now been, been challenged with the idea that when they're in doubt, they should get a test. I was actually at one of those uh, testing facilities this weekend, and it was inspiring to watch. There were long lines and lots of folks that responded. We had an, an, an overwhelming response to uh, our efforts to provide testing to people all over the state. And I watched um, law enforcement locally, uh, local officials working with our health department and our National Guard uh, to make sure that people got tested. And as said before, it was a, quite an experiment in, in expanded testing, uh, but it worked well. And we expanded, uh, we tested thousands of people all over Tennessee. And we didn't turn away anyone, and, but it's important to remind everyone that we don't want to turn away anyone from tests. If you believe that you need a test, we want you to get one. And what's important to remember is while these weekend um, testing surge capacity pop-up facilities are available on Saturdays and Sundays in different locations, and you can check the website to find out where those are located, that same free testing is available in our public health departments five days a week in every rural county in Tennessee. So you don't have to wait until the weekend. If you can actually get a test during the week, we urge you to, uh, to go to your local health department and get that testing as well. Today in our state, we have 7,238 7, confirmed cases in Tennessee we have lost 152 Tennesseans to COVID and 3,575 have recovered in our state. That's a 2.3% increase in the number of confirmed cases over yesterday, which is our lowest day over day percent increase to date. And we know this battle will continue until we have a treatment or until there's a widely available vaccine, but for the time being, we continue to flatten the curve in Tennessee from one end of our state to the other. Tennesseans have done what we've asked them to do. And we're seeing their hard work and their dedication to each other pay off. And we thank you for all that each one of you individually has done as we've challenged you to do so over these weeks, you have done just that and it has paid off. For 17 consecutive days in Tennessee, we have seen only single digit percentage increases in the number of cases in our state. Our hospitalization rate is consistently remained lower than national averages. And as of today, the number of recovered patients exceeds the number of active cases. This trajectory of symptoms and cases and hospitalizations shows a very encouraging sign. It's a very encouraging slow to the movement of the virus across our state. Our efforts to secure personal protective equipment and critical medical supplies is also very encouraging. While a lot of states have, sh have faced shortages and currently do in PPE, we've ordered more than 35 million pieces of personal protective equipment in Tennessee, $82 million worth, and we continue to aggressively procure this life-saving equipment uh, 
for our frontline workers, particularly our healthcare workers. And again, I want to thank healthcare workers all across the state for what you're doing. Putting yourself in the front lines, doctors, nurses, um, frontline workers that are protecting the public from COVID-19, we want to make sure that you have the protective equipment that you need and we're working hard to make sure that you do. So while the health outlook is showing signs of improvement, our economic outlook tells a very different story. Record unemployment numbers, thousands of businesses closed. Social distancing works, and as we open up our economy, it will be more important than ever that we stay committed to that. Lives and livelihoods depend on it. But here's the reality. For the good of our state, social distancing must continue, but our economic shutdown cannot. While we continue to emphasize social distancing for Tennesseans, I will not extend the safer at home order past April 30th. And moreover, we are working around the clock to be certain that some businesses will be able to open as soon as Monday, April the 27th. We will be outlining the measures and those, uh, those particular businesses in the next couple of days. And it's our firm intent that by May 1st, the end of next week, the vast majority of closed businesses in 89 Tennessee counties will be allowed to reopen. These businesses will open according to specific guidelines and guidance that we'll provide in accordance with state and national experts in both business and in medicine. I mentioned opening up in 89 counties because those are the counties where the state has health departments. Each of these counties will be covered under our forthcoming guidance and we'll be communicating with them directly about our plans to reopen the economy. For the businesses in our remaining counties, the six Tennessee counties with their own health departments, we'll continue to work with them as they develop their own plans to reopen. These counties are Shelby, Madison, Davidson, Hamilton, Knox, and Sullivan, and we want to be supportive and cooperative in working with them to develop their own plans. I'm not extending the order past the end of April, but we're working directly with our major metropolitan areas to ensure that they are in a position to safely reopen as soon and as safely as possible as well. I want to talk a bit about our economic recovery group. It's 30 leaders from the public and the private sector that are working around the clock to create this guidance to assist businesses in a safe reopening in our state. The industry representatives participating in this economic recovery group represent 140,000 Tennessee businesses and they employ 2.5 million Tennessee workers. Uh, I want to thank those who are a part of this economic recovery group, these industry leaders across the state. They, they genuinely and literally are working every day, uh, day and night to make sure that we can get the measures needed to provide for businesses so they can begin opening next week and on into May. The ERG is engaging directly with the business community to develop a Tennessee-specific plan for revamping our economy here in Tennessee. Our small businesses have suffered tremendously through this COVID-19 pandemic, and I've instructed Commissioner Ezell to work quickly with this business community so that we can reboot our economy beginning in April and extending into May. Now, as we work toward a phased reopen, I've instructed also our state parks to begin reopening this Friday. There will be further details announced regarding what parks will reopen, but we look forward to offering Tennesseans the chance again to get out and enjoy the outdoors in the spaces of our state parks beginning this week. Many of our efforts to fight COVID-19 have been outward facing, but we have been hard at work to protect vulnerable populations as well including inmates within our correction system. I've asked Commissioner Tony Parker to join me today to offer a brief report regarding the efforts in our state prisons. Tony? Thank you, Governor, for the opportunity to discuss the work that we're doing in the Department of Corrections as it relates to COVID-19. Of course, COVID-19 has been a special concern for us as in our correctional facilities that we consider a vulnerable population. 
And in that population, we have a less opportunity to have and to practice social distancing. As most of you know, the Department of Corrections took an early precautionary step on March the 2nd by suspending all visitation and volunteer services at all state prisons in order to limit the traffic that enters our facilities. Additional precautionary steps included postponing all legal visits with the exception of certain special circumstances, reducing the number of inmate work crews, as well as uh, suspending all emergency inmate transports and intake from the county jails. We have made modifications to our inmate programming. Uh, medical co-pays were suspended uh, for all inmates. Additional soap and cleaning supplies uh, have been provided to deliver uh, the inmates a free access. We have also uh, delivered inmates free telephone calls uh, that were provided by our vendor GTL so inmates could maintain contact with their family members uh, at home. All inmates as well as staff were issued masks uh, to wear. On March the 16th, all of our facilities began conducting non-invasive screenings uh, for staff and inmates. Temperature checks were conducted and a series of screening questions were asked of staff when they reported to work. Inmates received temperature checks and health assessments twice each week and are closely monitored for any signs and possible symptoms. Inmates who are in isolation or in quarantine status, in addition to regular medical care, they're provided twice daily health assessments to include temperature checks. TDOC's first positive case was detected on April the 1st in a contract employee. As a result, we quarantined three inmates at the Bledsoe uh, Correctional Complex who may have been potentially uh, exposed to the contract employee. Since that time, uh, the three inmates have been released from quarantine status. On April 3rd, an inmate at the Turney Center uh, prison who was taken to the hospital for an unrelated medical issue tested positive while uh, he was at the hospital and actually getting ready to be discharged. During that time, we had two additional contract employees and three TDOC employees test positive, which prompted our decision to launch mass testing for more than 1,000 employees at Bledsoe Correctional Complex and Northwest Correctional Complex. I want to thank you, Governor, for dedicating the resources toward that effort, which resulted in 1,145 employees being tested. 13 state employees and six contract workers were positive for COVID-19. The result of 1,126 of those employees uh, their tests were negative. On Saturday, April the 18th, we launched a second uh, proactive mass testing in conjunction with the Department of Health, our medical provider Centurion, and the Governor's Unified Command. 425 inmates at the Bledsoe Correctional Complex were tested. Of those, 150 tested positive, and we have been isolated and have been isolated at the facility. The vast majority of those who tested positive were asymptomatic, and we still have approximately 10 tests pending. Since our first positive inmate test on April the 4th, there have been a total of 174 inmates at four facilities to test positive for COVID-19. 163 of those positive inmate cases are at the Bledsoe Correctional Complex. Five tested positive at Turney Center Industrial Complex, and at Northwest Correctional Complex, five inmates tested positive, with one testing positive at Trousdale Turner. Although recently I've just been advised that we have one additional uh, positive case at Trousdale Turner uh, to report. Late yesterday afternoon, we launched our third round of mass testing of inmates at three facilities as a result of aggressive contact tracing and out of an abundance of caution. TDOC, in conjunction with our medical vendor and the Unified Command Group, implemented a plan to expand testing for approximately 3,100 additional inmates at the Bledsoe County Correctional Complex, the Northwest Correctional Complex, and the Turney Center Industrial Complex. 
We will also test all employees at the Turney Center Industrial Complex. The decision to expand testing is based on the positive returns we saw at the Bledsoe facility, as well as extensive contact tracing uh, from Northwest and Turney Center. Finally, I want to thank the employees of the Department of Corrections, as well as the employees of our medical provider, for their hard work and their dedication to the mission of the Department of Corrections. I also want to thank the inmate population who has been especially cooperative in their efforts to maintain a high level of sanitation within our facilities, their help in making uh, masks and gowns that have been used across the state, and for adhering to the necessary adjustments that we have all had to make while battling this invisible enemy. I want to thank the community for their support of our officers and the frontline staff all across Tennessee. I'll be happy to take any questions at the appropriate time. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Commissioner Parker. Dr. Pearson, you want to give a health update, please? Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Many of my points today are restatements of what the two previous gentlemen have said, so I'll just hit the highlights. Out of our 7,238 cases, we have had 3,575 recovered. The reason that that is important is for the first time, the number of recovered cases exceeds the number of active cases. Essentially, that means there are more people that have gotten over the disease that are now getting infected. That's very encouraging, and we're really glad to see that. That means our physical and social distancing efforts have worked, and so we need to keep them up. We do also know that the 2.3% increase of day over day is our lowest ever, which means that now that we've had 17 days worth, it's probably safe now from a medical standpoint to start relaxing that a little bit. Uh, so those numbers are important um, uh, for everyone to make note of. Other numbers that are important that we're really proud of, as the governor mentioned, more than 11,000 tests were done just on Saturday and Sunday uh, through our sites across the state. We had 33 sites. Several of those, uh, the majority of those were the pop-up drive-through sites um, that were the key success uh, was through the National Guard, uh, as well as we also had some brick and mortar sites available. The thing to remember here is that, as the governor mentioned, our brick and mortar health department sites are doing free testing every day, every weekday, uh, and you don't have to wait in your car and you don't have to wait in line. Uh, so I encourage you, if you think you need a test, don't wait until Saturday or Sunday. Go ahead and go to your health department now. Speaking of the coming weekend, we will have uh, additional sites, uh, new sites, different than the ones we had this week, uh, and that list will be available soon, so uh, keep an eye out for that. As Commissioner Parker said, uh, he and I have worked very closely together along with the rest of United Command, uh, Unified Command as well as his medical vendor, Centurion, uh, over all of the mass testing that's taking place. There is about 3,600, um, there are about 3,600 tests that are going to be ready in the coming days. Um, that is a combination of the mass testing at Bledsoe as well as Northwest and Turney unit-based testing and staff testing uh, at the Turney complex. Just wanted to give you a heads up on what to expect on those numbers. So um, the uh, Tennessee Department of Corrections lab vendor for their medical provider is out of state, and so that reporting might be a bit delayed. You will notice that uh, if you look at today's case count, the Bledsoe County count still only has 10 positives. That's because it has not yet been recorded uh, in those numbers. Uh, what we've already been told verbally about those results. Uh, likewise, many of the results from that additional 36 or 3,700 tests that are going to be coming in later this week, uh, it will take several days to get that posted on our uh, daily case count. Uh, so I just wanted to let you know what to expect there. Finally, I do have a report or an update on our nursing home data report. Uh, you may have seen that the Center for uh, Medicare and Medicaid, what we call CMS, uh, did come out in the last day or so uh, with a federal mandate for nursing homes to be required to report a positive case in their facility to residents and families. We see that as a very good thing. 
uh, and uh, causing facilities to take responsibility for those uh, notifications to families and residents. Not sure yet on the time frame or the exact details, uh, but that was announced in the last 24 hours. I'm also letting you know today that on Wednesday of this week, you will be getting a nursing home report or a long-term care facility report, I should say, uh, that in addition to the list of facilities um, that we put out every Friday, we will now start reporting the number of cases and the number of deaths uh, combined for residents and staff uh, in each of those facilities. Also in that nursing home report on Wednesday, we will be uh, giving an overview of the process um, just so you can get a better look at what we do uh, when we identify an outbreak in one of these uh, healthcare facilities. Um, that'll conclude my reports for today and uh, I'm happy to take questions. Thank you, Dr. Piercy. <clears throat> we will take questions, but before we do, let me just say, you know, this briefing provides a lot of encouraging information the numbers are in the right place. They're headed in the right direction and continue to do so. Um, we see uh, the opportunity to open up state parks and to begin to open businesses and to reboot our economy beginning next week and into May. Those are all very encouraging and we're all very grateful for the work that has been done, particularly the work that you have done individually uh, to do what you are asked to make sure that we found ourselves in this position. That being said, it is more true than ever today that our efforts in social distancing uh, are important. They are important so that we can in fact open businesses and in fact open the next phase and begin to uh, move out safely into the community. But the only way to do that is if Tennesseans remain committed to social distancing in whatever activity it is that you do and wherever it is that you go in whatever workplace that you find yourself entering, uh, the, the mandate to stay apart, the personal mandate, will, it, it will be lifted as a mandate, but it will not be lifted as something that is necessary for all of us to participate in. So I encourage every one of us, we have much to be grateful for and we have uh, much to be hopeful for and it's all because of the efforts that Tennesseans have made from one end of the state to the other to do their part and stay apart. We'll continue to do that going forward. I'll uh, be happy to answer questions. And remember, we have members of our Unified Command Group here. Um, General Holmes is here from uh, National Guard for Department of Military, Department of Health, Department of Corrections. So uh, lots of folks here to answer any questions you might have. Happy to take your questions. Thank you, Governor. First, we'll go to Kim Krusey with the Associated Press. Kim, your line is open. Hi, Governor. Hi, Kim. So you, you talk about flattening the curve here in Tennessee, but when you look at Tennessee's prison population, do you believe that there has been enough testing done on the, uh, on the inmates? Do you think that there needs to be more now that they're getting you know, higher numbers in Bledsoe County facility and get another round of mass uh, testing that's happening on the inmates? Yeah, that's, that's in fact what we're doing is it rapidly expanding our testing population and uh, our prison population testing. Tony, you want to make a comment of that or, or Dr. Pierce, either one on numbers? So thanks for the question. Uh, I would just comment that we are aggressively um, looking at contact tracing across the Department of Corrections. We're spending a lot of resources and spending a lot of time in following up on these uh, positive cases or even suspect cases. In many cases, we're, we are uh, what I've called proactively uh, testing, uh, in many cases, asymptomatic individuals in our facilities just because they happen, may have lived in a unit where an individual who we know tested positive uh, worked. So we are really, uh, I think, taking an aggressive approach on that. And I would just say that we will continue to evaluate the results that we see uh, in the days ahead. I know we have on, on tap for 3,100 tests to be uh, conducted. We should get those results back uh, within the next four to five, six days, hopefully. And at that time, I would evaluate those uh, numbers along with my consultation with the Department of Health and Dr. Piercy and the Unified Command Group to make a decision going forward about additional testing. And I would let Dr. Uh, Piercy comment on that if she wants. 
Commissioner Parker is correct. We have somewhat of a tiered approach uh, to testing that population. Uh, we uh, have been in consultation with other states, and uh, I talked to several of my colleagues uh, in the South uh, just this morning about their approach to uh, prison populations because, uh, as you very aptly pointed out, it is a vulnerable population, uh, and it is a population uh, that can uh, have spread very quickly because of the contained environment. So our approach uh, generally is that when there is a case identified uh, through contact tracing, just as Commissioner Parker said, uh, we do testing of those individuals, and then if there is uh, a high prevalence of disease amongst those, then we expand to a more unit-based testing, uh, which usually encompasses several hundred, uh, and then just like we uh, found at Bledsoe over the weekend, uh, if there is a substantial por proportion of positive cases amongst the unit, uh, then we'll expand to widespread mass population testing. Uh, that is the approach that we're taking, which is uh, entirely consistent with what the rest of the nation is doing uh, at this point. So currently no plans to just do a blanket. If any inmate wants a test, they can have a test. If, if we're going off of this tiered approach, uh, the tiered approach uh, is exactly what we're uh, doing in the general population, which is when we uh, find somebody that needs a test for any symptomatology, uh, which is the threshold that we're using in the, in the general public right now, um, then we provide that testing. And then even if they don't have symptoms, if they have been in contact or in the same area as a positive case, uh, we provide uh, testing on a more widespread basis then. It's the same approach that we're using uh, in all of our other uh, vulnerable and contained populations, uh, specifically nursing homes and other uh, group homes. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Natalie Allison with the Tennessee. And Natalie, your line is open. Hello, Governor. Um, Hello, I have a, a couple questions about this uh, decision not to extend the stay at home order. I know that you all are still working with these industry leaders to determine what's going to happen when. Um, but can you give us even a big picture idea on, on what businesses you um, are planning on having, having reopen first on Monday of next week, um, first of all? And then secondly, what is it going to mean, um, not just for businesses, but gatherings around the state? So the softball games, races, things like that. Can you, can you speak to those big picture questions? Yeah, we, we plan to keep the same social distancing um, guidelines in place even beyond and into uh, the next few weeks. So for now, the, and up until this May 1st date, which is what we're dealing with now, um, we'll continue to uh, have the same restrictions with regard to social gatherings, the numbers of people in social gatherings, that this change is primarily around businesses and businesses being able to open up. The most important thing to me is that people can get back to work and businesses can begin to reopen. That our, the economic, uh, the econo economic difficulty that's been created by this is it, it has been devastating to our state. And the sooner that we can begin to uh, change that uh, that picture, the better. So. Uh, these, these changes that are announced today are primarily around businesses. We, we don't know which businesses will be, uh, will be targeted for opening on Monday, but we will within just a couple of days. And then we'll announce the other businesses that will be targeted on Friday. And, but the social distancing requirements uh, will stay in place. As, as for working with um, the, the mayors and leaders in the state's largest areas, um, is that going to be basically those local leaders will determine when businesses can reopen or, or what is that process for working with them and how soon would you like to see most businesses reopening in, in Nashville and Memphis and Knoxville and places yeah. like that? So I, I've spoken with the mayors from those um, from all of those counties that are not that do not have health departments that are run by the state and that's the delineation. There are six counties in our state who have health departments that, that are not overseen by the state. And, and so for those leaders in those communities, we've been cooperative throughout this process from the beginning of it um, through the different, uh, through the different um, requirements that were put in place all across the state. As you know, they were done differently in those municipal areas than they were in the and broadly in the other counties in the state, and that's how we will reopen this state as well. 
it'll be phased, it will be smart, it will be um, strategic, and it will make sure primarily that the health and the safety of Tennesseans is put first. We, we know that, that we want our businesses to open and we need our economy to get started back. But we know too that we can do that in a way that's safe and that allows for the safety and the health of Tennesseans uh, to continue to be utmost. So I've spoken with those mayors and we've talked about a, a spirit of cooperation and, but they will be uh, providing their own outlines. Uh, we will be talking back and communicating with, what the, uh, with one another about what those are in a hopes that they too can return to a place of safely opening the economy all across the state um, at the right time. Next, we'll go to Kara Hartnett with the Nashville Post. Kara, your line is open. Hi, thanks for taking questions. Mm -hmm. um, when do you think you'll have a proper understanding of how far coronavirus has spread throughout the state? A proper understanding of how far it has spread? Mm -hmm. Like the infection rate. Uh, you want to speak to the, to, the, to the reproduction rate? It's fallen below one. No, the infection rate overall in the state, like 2% of the population will be, has been infected. Uh, I mean, the data, we, we know how many people have tested positive for that. Um, we do know that there are asymptomatic cases out there that we certainly don't know about. So we can't, we, we don't know the number of infected uh, cases, uh, which means that we can't know uh, the percentage of population that will be infected, that, that would be, uh, that would just be a projection. We, we can only look at data as it develops and you can only look at data as it is on the ground day to day and we track that data so we know how many cases and how many infections that are confirmed. Uh, but of course we don't know how many may be um, carrying the virus that we have not tested yet. How do you reconcile that with undoing mitigation efforts by reopening the economy? Uh, because we, we know that with broad testing, uh, and particularly with testing people with uh, symptoms, that we have an understanding about uh, the, the rapidity with which the disease spreads. Uh, let me let Dr. Piercy talk about uh, that, that reproduction rate and how that is a good indicator of what's happening in, in the spread of the virus across our state. The governor's correct. Uh, when we look at how fast a disease is spreading, we look at the reproduction rate, which is, uh, if you see it in writing, it's R subscript zero. And what you ideally want is you want that to fall below 1.0. When we first started, uh, we were at the uh, two to three range uh, in 2.6 or so. Uh, and the last estimate was 1.3 and maybe even a little bit lower. I haven't gotten an updated number on that in about a week. But that's one of the important numbers we look at. Another important number that we look at is the day-over-day -day percentage increase. Uh, when we first started measuring this, there were some days that we were having 14, 15, even 18 percent jumps uh, in day-over-day -day case count. What I mentioned earlier is that today it was 2.3 percent, which is the uh, lowest day-over-day -day increase that we've had since we started measuring it. So I, I think what you're what your question was is sort of when will we ever know how many Tennesseans, what percentage of Tennesseans have it? Um, and you have to remember that it really uh, is not practical to test every single person in the state on any one given day uh, because that just tells us that day snapshot. So the other indicators of the reproductive rate and the um, uh, day over day percent increase are the two main um, uh, variables that we watch. Well, I guess I'm wondering how you know those metrics are accurate if you don't know how it's spreading among, among asymptomatic patients. I think uh, asymptomatic uh, positivity is uh, something that's very interesting in the field. Uh, we know that uh, the elderly population uh, has a higher asymptomatic rate. Um, quite frankly, uh, we're learning that our prison population has a higher asymptomatic rate uh, than we thought. 
that is helping us learn more. Uh, these are things that uh, we wish we knew and we learn more every day, uh, but that's why they call it a novel coronavirus. It's brand new and so uh, we're gathering more science uh, with each passing week. Next we'll go to Sam Stockard with the Daily Memphian. Sam, your line is open. Yes, thanks Governor, I appreciate your time. Yep. The, uh, the Memphis Restaurant Association is requesting or preparing to request that you allow the, them to open at 50% capacity on May 1st and 100% capacity a, a month later. So is that something you can agree to? And are there other restrictions you're foreseeing for re restaurants? In fact, some people have been saying these restaurant closings have even been unconstitutional. What's your, can you answer those two or three things? Yeah, we're working with the Restaurant Association right now to develop that, um, those measures that are important for a restaurant to open safely. Um, you you talked specifically about Memphis and that Shelby County uh, will have their own uh, requirements on their restaurants. They may be the same as ours. They may be a different timing than ours. As I said earlier, we're, we're gonna put guidance out for uh, the counties that have state health departments. Shelby County is not one of those counties. so. Uh, what exactly will happen in Shelby County may be a little different than what happens in the rest of the state, uh, but that's exactly what we're doing. We're working with the restaurant association, those who represent the workers, to make sure that we put in place the measures uh, and the guidance and the guidelines for restaurants to open safely for their workers and for their customers. And, and when we do so, then we then we believe that that uh, it, that will be the time when those when those uh, businesses can open safely. What, what do you, what's your response to people who say that these uh, shutdowns have been unconstitutional? Yeah, well, the, what's most important is that these shutdowns occurred uh, in order to save people's lives. And Tennesseans have done what Tennesseans needed to do, and that was to uh, put in place the measures and to follow those measures to do just what was necessary to stop the spread of a deadly virus, and they've done that. And we certainly cannot entirely stop it, but to slow it to a point that we can manage that spread, have the, the capacity on our healthcare system to take care of it and allow Tennesseans uh, to operate and run their businesses at the same time. That's a goal. And, and I'm, I'm grateful that Tennesseans have done what they've done to get us to the place where we are. And uh, we, are, we, are, we are encouraged to move forward. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Phil Williams of News Channel 5. Phil, your line is open. Uh, good, good afternoon, Governor. Uh, last week, you uh, and Commissioner McWhorter told lawmakers that you were looking at constructing some backup facilities for hospitalizations, just in case the, you know, when, when you reopen the economy, the, 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 there's a surge and a need for more hospital beds. Is part of your message that we are going to have to accept a higher level of hospitalizations and maybe even death to keep the economy open? Well, the message is that we know that until there is a widespread vaccine that COVID-19 will, uh, will exist in the, in the society out there. But the message is that we can begin to open businesses and remain uh, safe in a way uh, because of the way that we change the way we do business and that is that is what our that is what our effort is the message is that social distancing is what has slowed the spread of this virus and contained a widespread virus that 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 may have killed many more people and sickened many more than it would have if we hadn't um, you know imposed social distancing requirements or guidelines we will continue to use that social distancing going forward because that's the way we can safely open businesses. That, that's the message, is we want to allow people to work, allow people to live, allow people to move in their society, but to do so in a safe way. And we want to give uh, guidance and measures and guidelines so that people can do just that. But, but, but if there is a resurgence in this virus, are you prepared to shut the economy down again? Or are we just going to have to accept that that's part of the new normal? Well, I think that we certainly know that, uh, and we will actually, our strategy is to work with the local health departments in counties all across this state 
uh, to monitor what's happening in an individual county when there is a, um, a, a rise in cases that's, that presents a particular level of danger in a county, then we'll work with that health department to make adjustments necessary in that region to make sure that we don't let, uh, that we don't let the virus you know, develop to a, a range or to a place uh, that causes a real problem for us. It's gonna be, it's gonna be really important, and that's why we'll continue to say that it's really important that Tennesseans continue to understand that this virus travels with contact, so social distancing is the way to, to be safe. And, and we know that Tennesseans can be safe and operate businesses at the same time. Uh, we believe that's gonna happen, and, um, and, we're, and we're planning for that. But we're also planning for, uh, should there be uh, a rise in some region or in some county or in some spot, that we will respond to that accordingly. Thank you, Governor. Yes, sir. Next, we'll go to Ainsley Daniel with WJHL. Ainsley, your line is open. Hi, Governor Lee. Thank you for taking our questions mm -hmm. um, again. A couple questions for you. The first one is, why are liquor stores considered essential as opposed to other businesses? Well, there are a lot of businesses that are essential that provide, that provide alcohol, that provide food, that provide goods and services. There are a, a whole number of businesses that um, that are deemed essential. Let me just say this too. You know, as, I, as we think about, we, we classify businesses as essential and non-essential. There's really no business in our state that is non-essential to the economy of Tennessee. That's one of the reasons why it is so important that we get our economy back on track. Small business owners who have created a business and that's been their livelihood, and it has been what they have built up to send their kids to college or to, or to pay for their mortgage or their rent or the, the services. These are, these are essential businesses to those people. And it's one of the reasons that we need so badly to make sure that we impose and continue to follow social distancing so we can be safe and allow those business, open, uh, business owners to reopen those previously deemed non-essential, but truly essential to the lives of Tennesseans. And uh, there, are, I, there are a number of those businesses across the state, and we, we hope to open them as soon as possible and as many as possible and do it in as safe a way as possible. And another question for you. Do you have guidance for any of the schools on prom or graduation? Uh, you know, I can't answer that question, but we'll look at that. Um, I, Penny Schwinn, our Department of Education Commissioner, is not in the room with us today, but uh, we certainly will look at that and provide that kind of information. Uh, I haven't been asked that question personally. I would guess our Department of Education has, but I'll look into that. Thank you. Thank you. That's all the time we have for questions today, Governor, if you'd yeah. like to make your closing statement. Oh, thank you very much for being here again today. Um, and thank you, Tennesseans, for doing what it took to get us into this place, to be able to announce the opening dates of businesses, to be able to announce the rebooting of our economy, to be able to announce numbers that, um, that put us in a position to do this and to do it safely. It is a very encouraging day for us, and it's because of the efforts that you have taken the uh, sacrifices, great sacrifices that many have made, and I'm encouraged where we're headed. Uh, so thank you for what you're doing. Continue to do your part and stay apart. Thank you.